Nicole is ready. Nicole, can you hear me? Can, can, can we get a mic check? I don't know. Can, yeah. Oh, nice. Hi. Coming through loud and clear. Coming through loud and clear. Okay, Nicole, are you ready to meet your judges? I am ready to meet my judges, yes. Okay, let's bring those judges out. Oh, here's Nat, JK, Kelly, Cliff, Andy, Felix, Donna, and Head Judge Liz. Okay, Cole, this is your time to shine right now. Whenever you're ready. Thanks, Josh. All right. Um, we're good? Yeah? You good? Great. You guys look great. Uh, if we could get some music, that'd be fantastic. Cool. No time like the present. All right. Here we go. Time. We're going to spend our time together today talking about tomorrow because I believe the future of coffee is happening right now. I'm going to make you first a four-part all-coffee signature beverage. It's going to showcase the future of coffee genetics. And each of these beverages is going to be brewed in a way that dissolves preconceived notions that we as an industry have been holding on to regarding brew methods. All of these coffees have synergies because each of them is a natural anaerobic fermentation. And I've visited each of the producers, and in conversation with them, we have come to agree that for flavor in coffee, natural anaerobic fermentations is what will drive us into the future. So, starting with the coffee I have here in these silver tints. This is a variety of coffee that doesn't actually exist just yet. It's a genetic species that's in the genetic testing stages with a prestigious farm called the Terra and the Institute, the Agronomic Institute of Campinas, both located in Brazil. They've been researching and testing these genetics to create what the future of coffee might hold. It's a cross between Coffea arabica, the parent species of all the coffees I'll serve you today, and Coffea racemosa, a rare genetic species from South Africa that's known for drought resistance and low caffeine, telling me that the future of coffee might be strictly derived from flavor and not a vehicle for us to get out of bed in the morning. Really, they're changing the preconceived notion everyone in this room has on what coffee has to offer. So these shots, 20 grams in, 60 grams out, will yield purple notes in this beverage. I'm gonna leave these here for now, and instead, I'm gonna start the second coffee for this beverage, using an e-brick. This is the oldest coffee brewing technique that we have on the planet. And I'm gonna use an Asian origin coffee, to completely dissolve and change the preconceived notions that we as an industry hold for this brewery. So I'm going to get this started, and then we're going to come back to this, because this takes about three minutes, and I'll explain that. I'm going to automate the process to bring future technique into this heritage style brewery. And while that's happening, I'm going to brew a third coffee, a filter coffee, using this espresso machine, changing the way that we as baristas operate on this particular unit here and changing the preconceived notions we have for what an espresso machine can do in our cafes. Now my goal as a barista is to focus on my clients and provide legendary client service which comes with storytelling and sharing about the coffee, where it comes from and why it's going to taste the way it does. But sometimes I don't have time to do that because I'm stuck in the midst of brewing cycles. So by using the third group head, I know that I'm getting 12 grams of water per second, and I'm getting a very consistent and controlled flow using 15 grams of coffee and 120 grams of water. I'm making a very concentrated brew of a clever dripper using a geisha variety. And this, in our future of coffee genetics, is going to drive a bright citric acidity into the cup, reminding me of the color yellow. Okay, coming back to our e-book. This is a coffee brewer that, for a long time, I thought was just about strength and intensity. But really, there's wonderful flavor clarity here. We've used 12 grams of coffee, 
100 grams of water, starting cold, and I've used a Ketwai, which is a past success story of that same institute that's helping design Aramosa, the Agronomic Institute of Campinas. They launched it in 1972, and since then it's migrated globally. And in this case, I refer to it as a success story because it's been produced in a rural indigenous village in eastern Myanmar by a group called the Pago. We'll go into more detail about them shortly. But this particular ebrick is going to add wonderful uh, body into our future genetics, and it's going to bring a wild strawberry dose, reminding me of the color red. So it's a one and a half minute automated mix cycle for about two and a half minute total boil time. The total dissolved solids of this bird is about three and a half percent. The extraction, really maximizing the extraction on these ebrick brews, completely changing what I thought this brew was all about. So I'm filtering it through this arrow press to make sure there's no grit or grind that comes into your beverage today. Now, I have three coffees here, three unique genetics. We're mixing together 120 grams of Aramosa through the espresso, we have 90 grams of Katwai through the ebrick. Here is 100 grams of geisha. I'm going to bring these all into this one vessel here. And I know there's a lot of moving parts at the moment. Don't worry, I've got some content for you. These are all the colors that for me correspond with each of the coffees I've added. The brew style I've used and all the information that I believe you currently need in order to enjoy this beverage. We're going to have one more ingredient. It's right at the bottom in the middle there. And for me, it's in this jar here. This is the, the one that really changed it for me, changed my preconceived notion. This is a wash during shift that's been brewed using an espresso machine just like that one. That then those shots of espresso were put into a freeze dryer to dry for 10 hours, removing all of the liquid content, leaving us with already dissolved solids and sugar contents. So I'm adding five grams into our future of coffee genetics to add sweetness and strength into this brew. This is gonna add a really unique long tea quality into the beverage today. Now, I wanted to add this coffee because it's an homage to all coffee, coffee Arabica, and it's also a coffee just like this that really struck me to have a future in this industry, a washed Ethiopian coffee, as I'm sure a lot of people in this room are related to. Now, judges, for this beverage, please look for an aromatic of blackberry and vitals which will be focused and pushed through your nose because of this particular vessel and a more intentional way of drinking coffee using this. The first note that will strike you is blackberry, thanks to the Aramosa espresso base in this beverage, followed by wild strawberry, created from that Katwai, a lovely pink grapefruit, just like the color of these jars. From the geisha, here we go, and oolong tea, from that instant yurga chef. And we're gonna summarize everything with 80% dark chocolate today. Now, as you drink that, think about what the future might hold. Genetics like that one make their way to rural indigenous villages across the world. What's the future of coffee look like then? Enjoy. <laughs> Judges, we're going to travel to eastern Myanmar and we're going to visit the Pago community that's produced that natural anaerobic Ketwai, which for me is just so wonderful in milk 
as it cuts through those flavors and creates an amazing cherry liqueur. And paired with three parts of this Avalon dairy, it's gonna make a melted chocolate ice cream pot. This drink reminds me of a dessert that you might experience at a lovely restaurant. Now, the Pao communities are not doing this solo. And that's something that I think is wonderful about this coffee. They're being empowered by a group called Behind the Leaf, which is investing their time in helping with processing the cherries of these communities. Because the Pao have actually been producing coffee for over 100 years. But it's not until the last five years when Behind the Leaf moved in to assist and aid in the processing that they started to fetch specialty prices. So this particular coffee sold for five times the commodity price of coffee. That's what we paid for this lot. And Behind the Leaf not only is assisting in processing and helping do this wonderful three-day anaerobic fermentation, which is driving malic acidity and bringing that nice cherry liqueur quality into this milk beverage. But they're also helping in a humanitarian sort of way. Every time one of these villages delivers cherries to their washing station, they're also swapping them out with water filtration systems, bringing access to clean drinking water in their communities. This was something that when we saw firsthand, we really wanted to champion and tell that story. So something that we at Rosso Coffee Roasters have taken upon all of our cafes. And now, when you fill up water, you're actually using the same water filtration system that this coffee is actually producing for these villages, bringing access. Now, again, cherry liqueur and melted milk chocolate ice cream. and get to work with that Aramosa genetic that they're creating. And the fact that it has no caffeine, caffeine is a bitter compound, changing the way sweetness and acidity is perceived in that coffee, that really changed my mind on what I can do on my side. So what I've done, you might call me crazy, but I've actually decaffeinated one of the best coffees that I've personally ever tasted. It's that same geisha you experienced in the signature beverage comes from the Palma del Tucan, an amazing farm in the Cundina Marca Department of Colombia. And it's processed in a way where they put whole cherry in ceramic tanks buried into the ground and add captured yeast from their own farm, driving flavors of their terroir into their dish. And that's gonna result in this espresso course, in notes of tangerine, candied orange, pink grapefruit. Okay, hold off on drinking this. We're gonna let the crema, evaluate the crema, but we're gonna let these cool for just a moment to open up. Now, in collaboration with Swiss Water Decaffeination, we've taken out the caffeine molecule in this coffee, changing the way it tastes. And that's added a really interesting, lovely, 
botanical tonic quality to this coffee. And it's got a medium weight, a silky coating and slightly sticky texture. A really long finish, it's gonna carry on. It's slightly dry, but pleasantly so, like a tonic. Now, how do we influence the future of coffee? I think that's possible for everybody in this room. It's within you, and it's within me. We just need to look past preconceived notions, open the boundaries that are concealing us in a box, really start to make change without worry of what people are gonna think. Because we can all address what the future wants, especially in a time like now. Judges, please stir that geisha five times with the golden spoons and the pink tumblers there. And enjoy what I believe might be the world's first caffeine-free geisha. Nice work. Thanks. So, um, how does it feel in the finals round now? After going yesterday and then sort of the, the anticipation of not knowing if you've made it and then having to prepare again. What, right. is, that, what is that process like? Uh, yeah, great question. It, it felt today a lot more smooth. Uh, I got a lot of similar faces, so there's no big jack-in-the-box surprise, but that's okay. We don't need surprises. Um, yeah, I think I, I was able to iron out some of the things I did yesterday uh, and improve on that. I'm happy with it. I'm stoked with it. it sounds really monotone, but I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, um, one thing I'm curious is, I know a lot of competitors, they often watch back their sets or maybe they think about, you know, the things that they could have done better. And if they do make or advance, they change those things. Are, is that something that you do as well, and I do, what's that yeah. process like? Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a sports guy, and I, I think game footage is how you get better at your game. You know, why did I miss that shot? It's maybe my form, it's maybe the way I took it, it's maybe I didn't, you know, so I, I watched back what, um, what I did yesterday, and I found some gaps, I found some, some uh, flaws, let's say. And uh, I think I included everything today. It was a full, it was a full set. So every, everything was there. I didn't see you miss any shots. All the judges got their shots. They all got their shots. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> 